Wars are an issue of logistics before they are one of combat, and this fight is no different. As in all wars, it's easier to maintain what you have than it is to regain it from an invader. Logistical support of systems under attack is a critical component of the Thargoid War, and one which is often drowned out by the louder bug hunters out smashing interceptors. Both roles are key to victory in a system dealing with the Thargoid threat, so they both matter. The weight with which they impact a fight and the risks involved change based on system states. Only when a system is completely overtaken by Thargoids does combat become the only way to win. Until that point, there is always something that trade and rescue ships can do to repel the invaders. When a system is threatened by Thargoids, a new set of missions become available, centered on logistical operations. Evacuation missions become available in the passenger lounge and work much the same way as when a station is on fire. Pilots are required to ferry passengers to a rescue ship within a certain period of time, though this time has increased to compensate for the rescue ships being farther away, requiring multiple jumps to complete a route. The distances involved can exceed the fuel range of some ships, meaning that a fuel scoop is advised, as the rescue ships assigned won't always be the nearest to a given location. These passenger missions are also not peaceful, as some will have mercenary and pirate factions working to destroy your ship in transit. The longer travel requirements mean that extra consideration should be given to shielding and armor, regardless of the Thargoid threat in a given system. In the mission board, a selection of mission variants are also possible. Emergency orders for various commodities are a common sight, and pay more than normal in both credits and materials, making these missions an excellent way to farm rare engineering parts, like biotech conductors. They are as time-consuming as ever, and can be accomplished individually or as part of a team. Fleet carriers are a handy assist, making even bulk missions much easier to manage. The emergency conditions in a system mean that these source and return missions are more likely to ask for emergency-related things, like basic food, basic medicine, and emergency shelters. However, in my travels through the mission boards, I saw source contracts for things like Onion Head and Osmium, so anything goes here, and it's best not to pre-purchase commodities expecting a mission to have them, as you are likely to be disappointed. Injured personnel missions are interesting, as they've never been seen before, but use the haulage contract template. The missions are identical to any other haulage-based mission, but instead of a commodity, pilots are supplied with occupied escape pods to transport to a designated rescue ship. These pods take up cargo space and are treated like commodities, but with generally small volumes per contract. I rarely saw an injured personnel mission exceed 10 pods per transaction. What kind of ship you bring to run these missions will depend on the station size and system state. Once a system goes under Thargoid alert, all new missions become available. A Thargoid alert means that a system is being probed by Thargoid ships. Signal sources will appear that pilots can drop in on, but trade and passenger ships are left alone by the aliens. Piracy and bounty hunter interdictions continue as normal. All combat is instigated by players who seek it out, leaving commerce to operate as normal. Thargoid alert systems can be serviced by the same kind of ships that would normally perform these runs. No AX considerations are needed in these ship builds, though the mission constraints will require things like fuel scoops and shields for some ships. If you are worried about getting jumped by Thargoids, alert systems are the best place to go, and a better use of your time than they are for combat pilots. A Thargoid invasion state means that the aliens have become actively hostile in the system, and are attacking stations, settlements, and any ship in transit around the system. This also includes hyperspace jumps in or out of an invaded system. All interdictions are instantly hostile, with the only options for defenders being to run or fight. There is no difference in the mission types or availability for logistical missions between Thargoid Alert and Thargoid Invasion states. The biggest difference is the risk factor when accepting these missions. Because of the dynamics involved in Thargoid attack, 
ships operating in an invaded system need to be heavily shielded, armored, and fast. In order to reliably escape encounters, they can't fight. I was able to accomplish this with a mid 400 meter per second boost on a partially engineered Imperial Cutter. Using the other large ships in a system like this is possible, but not recommended, since they lack the boost necessary to escape an interceptor, making the only reliable escape option a hyperspace jump. Medium ships can be more easily engineered to reach the speeds necessary to deal with these engagements, making ships like the Python and Crate excellent choices, especially in more remote systems that can't accommodate a large ship. It's not difficult to load up on a lot of missions quickly. On my first attempt, I was able to hit the parallel mission cap before filling up a 256-ton cargo bay, so medium-sized ships probably don't have to feel left out hitting up outposts, as there are plenty of opportunities for everyone. Thargoid War logistical missions offer excellent rewards, with multiple options for collecting Grade 5 engineering materials. Several missions offered biotech conductors, which are the most difficult engineering material to acquire, being impossible to procure through any other source but mission rewards and material traders. Current information on the Thargoid War is available through the Galaxy Maps Thargoid War tab, though several different communities will have Discord servers with focus systems, where people are pooling their efforts. I rely on the AXI Discord for system targets, but check the Thargoid War tab in the Galaxy map to confirm that the system in question is still in need of work. The status bar shows the system's current state, progress towards recovery, or the consequences should recovery not be achieved. When Thargoids first invade a system, one of its ports will come under direct attack. This attack remains in effect for one week until the cycle turns over. If not enough progress is made across the system, counting the efforts of combat pilots and the impact of logistical missions, the port under attack is abandoned and another port falls under attack. This process repeats until the last port falls, at which point all assets in the system are abandoned and the system becomes infested. Once in this state, only the efforts of combat pilots can recover it. Once recovered, all starports damaged or abandoned become repairable with the repair process operating identically to how it has in the past. Starports remain damaged until all requested supplies are delivered, at which point they are restored to full function when the next weekly cycle ticks over. Missions available in these systems are mostly source and return bulk orders. These missions pay well, though they require the most time. The local news menu will show the list of supplies that a station needs in order to be made fully operational which may be sold directly to the commodities market. No evacuation-related missions are available, and there are no AX hostels in the system to harass local traffic. Overall, whether you like the Thargoids or not, whether you like combat or not, these missions are a useful way to earn materials and credits. While not as good as some more specialized mining or exploration-related credit-earning methods, it does provide an accessible way for pilots of all ships to participate. If you are interested, I can go over some specific ship builds tailored for running these missions. Let me know in the comments. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.